It's been nearly a year since the first video on AA rechargeable batteries. Since the first video, all the brands have been placed into these outdoor solar lights and allowed to charge and discharge over 300 times. So the question is, are these AA batteries still any good or are some brands just as good as new? We're gonna find out. Additionally, I have some additional AA batteries that have been sitting on a shelf for nearly a year. We're gonna do some testing on those to see how much self-discharge occurred. So let's get the testing underway and see which brand is the best. To test the batteries, I'm using the PowerX MHC9000 Wizard One Charger, which can both charge and discharge the batteries. So to ensure an accurate and fair test, the charger is going to charge all the batteries, then it's gonna allow each battery to rest for one hour, then it will discharge the battery, then rest for an hour and recharge it again. This charger will report the discharge capacity at the end of each cycle. The entire process will take about 24 hours for each set of batteries. Charging will be done at 500 milliamps and discharged at 500 milliamps. During each of the tests, the batteries will be discharged to approximately one volt. I originally purchased four sets of batteries and three of the four sets were fully charged, then placed in storage for testing at a future time. One of the four batteries were used in the solar night lights. After nearly a year of getting drained and then charged again every day, it's time to test the condition of each of the batteries. We'll be comparing the batteries against each other and against your own milliamp hour capacity rating. It'll take nearly 24 hours to get the results on our first set of batteries. And the results are in and the Rayovac with a 1,350 milliamp rating produced 1,267 which is 94% of its rated capacity. The Thunderbolt is supposed to produce 2,200 and delivered 2,085 which is 95% of its rating. The Amazon Basics Black is designed for 1,900 and made 1,879 which is 90 99%. Very impressive. The Amazon Silver, which is rated for 2,400, made 2,337, which is 97%. Again, very impressive by the Amazon batteries. So both of the Japanese-made batteries beat both of the Chinese brands. Let's see if the trend continues with our next set of batteries. The Energizer, which is a Japanese-made battery, produced 1,919, which is 96% of its 2,000 rating. The EBL, which is made in China, is supposed to make 2,800 and only made 2,392, which is only 85%. The Panasonic Interloop produced 1,878, which is 99% of its rating. So it's tied for the lead with the Amazon Black. Very impressive. The IKEA Lada made 2,388, which is 97% of its rating. Once again, all of the batteries made in Japan beat all the batteries made in China. The final two batteries that underwent a full year of testing are the Duracell and the PowerX, both made in Japan. And the results are in for our final two batteries. The Duracell, which is rated for 2,450, delivered 2,488, which is 102%. Very impressive. The PowerX advertises 2,600, but only delivered 2,426, which is 93%. If price is not a factor, and it's all about which battery can produce the most milliamp hours after daily use for nearly a year, the Duracell came out on top, but the PowerX, EBL, and IKEA weren't too far behind. Each brand rates their own batteries for milliamp hour capacity. Based upon their own ratings, once again, the Duracell came out on top, delivering 102% of its advertised rating. The Amazon Basics Black and Panasonic Interloop did very well at 99%. Later on in the video, we'll do some testing on the batteries to better understand why the performance of some batteries seems to be degrading more than others. Now that we've tested the batteries that have been in use for the past year, let's move on and test the batteries that have been sitting on a shelf for the past year. Before we begin the one year test, let's take a quick look at the 42 day test. 42 days after placing the three sets of batteries in storage, I tested one set of the batteries from each brand and here are the results. After 42 days, the battery with the most juice was a tie between the IKEA Lada and the Duracell with the PowerX very closely behind. Looking at it from another perspective, the Energizer, the Interloop, and the Amazon Basics Black averaged around a 0.16 to 0.17% self-discharge rate per day, which is far better than the EBL at nearly twice that rate with a 0.32% loss per day on average. Over a span of 42 days, this can really add up. As you can see, the Energizer, Amazon Basics Black, and Interloop only lost around 7% of their charge after 42 days, while the higher capacity batteries lost around 10% or even more. These batteries have been in storage for nearly a year, so let's get the testing underway and see how each of the brands perform. The Rayovac started off with a voltage of 1.15. The Harbor Freight also had an initial voltage of 1.15. The Amazon Basics Black did better than the Rayovac and Harbor Freight with an initial voltage of 1.19. Very impressive. 
The Amazon Silver wasn't far behind at 1.18, so the Amazon Basics Black battery stayed in the lead. It's been right at four hours and the test results are in. The Rayovac, which is rated for 1,350 milliamp hours, produced 1,023. The Harbor Freight Thunderbolt, rated for 2,200, only produced 1,291. Wow, that's a lot of self-discharge. The Amazon Basics Black, rated for 1,900, produced 1,526 and takes the lead for the highest milliamp capacity from the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt. The Amazon Silver with a rating of 2,400 milliamp hours produced 1,864 and takes the lead from the Amazon Basic Silver. Let's move on to our next four batteries. The Energizer did very well at 1.18 volts, but the Amazon Basics Black held on to the lead with 1.19 volts. The ABL only started off at 1.11 volts, and that's the worst we've seen yet. The Inloop is at 1.16 volts. The IKEA did the best yet at 1.2 volts and moves into the lead. It's been another four hours, and the results are in with the Energizer, which is rated for 2,000, delivering 1,600. And the Amazon Silver holds on to the lead. The EBL, rated for 2,800, only produced 1,325, which is less than 50% of its rated capacity. The Inloop, which is rated for 1,900, produced 1,400. The IKEA Lada, which is rated for 2,450, moves into the lead with an impressive 2,017. The Duracell, also rated for 2,450, barely comes up short of the IKEA with 2,700. 7 milliamp hours. The Power X, which is rated for 2,600, only produced 1,871. So the IKEA takes the win for the most available milliamp hour capacity after one year of storage. There are a couple ways to look at things when trying to figure out which battery is best. The more expensive, higher capacity Japanese batteries, the IKEA and the Duracell, beat the competition by over 100 milliamp hours. With regard to where the batteries are made, the top seven performing batteries are made in Japan, and the worst performing three are all made in China. If one looks at the percentage of rated capacity, capacity after sitting on a shelf for a year, once again the IKEA and the Duracell came out on top with a very respectable 82%. Most of the other brands weren't too far behind, ranging from 72 to 80%, which is still pretty good. However, two of the three brands that are manufactured in China, the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt and the EBL, really seem to struggle at 59 and 47% respectively. Since the PowerX charger doesn't have the ability to measure internal resistance, I went ahead and purchased an Opus BT3400 charger. So what's internal resistance? It's basically the opposition of current flow within the battery. A battery with low internal resistance can meet high energy spikes such as a flash on a camera better than a battery that has high internal resistance. We'll first measure the internal resistance of the batteries that were sitting unused on a shelf for a year, and then we'll measure the internal resistance of the batteries that were used in the solar rechargeable lights for the past year to see if the internal resistance changed over time. By the way, all the batteries were fully charged before measuring their internal resistance. The batteries that sat on the shelf for a year and only experienced a couple of charge and discharge cycles should have a better internal resistance. The Rayovac had an internal resistance of 82 milliohms. The Harbor Freight Thunder Bolt is 57. The Amazon Basics Black, 72. The Amazon Basics Silver, 58. Now let's test a set of batteries that were in the solar charged battery night lights for the past year. The Rayovac has 215 milliohms of resistance. The Harbor Freight Thunderbolt is at 192. The Amazon Basics Black did much better at 124. The Amazon Basics Silver did even better at 112. Let's move on to our next set of batteries, testing the batteries that had very little use first. The Energizer had 64 milliohms of resistance. The EBL was at 108. The Inaloop, 77. The IKEA Lata, 63. After a year of use, the Energizer was at 93, which is the best of all the batteries so far. The EBL was at 232, which is the worst of all the batteries so far. The Inloop was at 78, which is now the best we've seen yet. The IKEA did really great at 70 and is now in the lead. Let's move on to our final set of batteries. The Duracell started out at 54. The Power X, 77. After a year of use, the Duracell was at 71, which is just 1 million behind the IKEA. Very impressive. The Power X did great at 88. The Varda brand, which is manufactured in Germany, and the Active Energy batteries, which are manufactured in China, only went through about eight months of testing. However, the Varda had an internal resistance of 144. The Active Energy was at 114. Internal resistance is sort of like the blood pressure test for a battery. Just like blood pressure, it can vary somewhat, but it is a good indicator of battery health. After nearly a year of use, the IKEA, Duracell, Inloop, Pyrex, and Energizer all had an internal resistance below 100. Once again, the top seven brands were manufactured in Japan 
understand why the bottom three performing brands were manufactured in China. So taking into account the average finish of the three categories, including total milliamp hour capacity after nearly a year of storage, milliamp hours after nearly a year of daily use, and finally the internal resistance, the Duracell averaged finishing in first place narrowly ahead of the IKEA. The Amazon Basics Black and Interloop were nearly tied with a fourth place average finish. The Energizer and the Amazon Basics Silver averaged fifth. Once again, the batteries manufactured in China finished in the last three positions. If you're interested in seeing how much self-discharge occurs in nickel metal hydride battery after two years, check back in another year. I still have one more set of batteries resting on a shelf, and also I plan to put some batteries back into these rechargeable lights, and we'll see how they perform after two years of service. All my video ideas, including this one, come from viewers. So if there's a different type of battery you'd like me to test, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment, or if you have another video idea unrelated to batteries, I'd like to hear that comment as well. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.